And it was in the early or late 60s, early 70s, that I became interested in women's rights because I had attended a lot of civil rights meetings and it just seemed to me that women were not given as prominent a role as the men were. And then I began to look at what was happening to me in my job. Uh, at the time, I was a juvenile court probation officer and uh, I was discriminated against. Uh, the men were being given a raise and the women were not given equal pay. And I went to the chief probation officer, my boss, and said, um, you know, we deserve this raise. And he said, well, you don't go into hazarded, hazardous you know, situations like the men do. And I said, you're absolutely wrong. I said, we go into situations where we have to remove children from a home. And there are a lot of, you know, very you know, dangerous situations and it is not fair. So that was my first encounter with, you know, uh, discrimination against women in terms of that particular uh, instance. So, uh, and then I, like other women, I began to be more sensitive to things that were happening. and. We were involved at the same time in democratic politics, and even there, women were never able to run for office. They, you know, uh, we were the ones that helped others, men, run for office, but we were never given the opportunity. And I just, my eyes began opening in terms of things that were happening to women, and that's how I. I was supported by my husband in many ways in getting actively involved, and um, things just grew from there. Around how old were you when that light bulb went on in uh, for well, you that women weren't? I have to do a little bit of arithmetic, but um, this was in the, I would say, the late 60s and early 70s, and that was the time when The Feminine Mystique was written, when uh, Betty Friedan and Germaine Greer were writing these philosophical tomes about discrimination against women. And so I was probably in my 30s and 40s at the time. I had five children. I was working. Um, I went to graduate school. I mean, I had a full load, uh, like, you know, nothing halfway. And um, so it really sort of blossomed, and I was so lucky to be alive and to be active in the 70s here in Kentucky because there were so many wonderful women who were involved at the same time, friends of mine. Who were some of those women? Uh, Susie Post, uh, my dear friend. She and uh, her husband were uh, also very involved in civil rights activities. Um, uh, oh gosh, uh, some nuns, Sister Lucy Freiberg was involved. Uh, I have a story about our, one of the conferences we attended. Allie Hickson, who was very involved in the Equal Rights uh, 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 Movement. I was on the, uh, at the time, I helped to found the Kentucky Women's Political Caucus. I was a founding member of the National Women's Political Caucus. So that there were women who came from different perspectives from the national, I never joined the National Association of Women now because I was more interested in political action for women and that's why I helped with Rebecca Westerfield uh, who was a vice president of the, uh, the Student Government Association at UK. So Rebecca and I helped to develop, the, we attended the meeting in Washington that was the origin of the National Women's Political Caucus, came back to Kentucky and said, we've got to start one in Kentucky, and we did. So those are some of the women. Rebecca later became a, a judge, um, and Allie uh, with the Equal Rights Amendment. I was on the Commission on Women and helped change some of the laws. Uh, the Kentucky Commission on Women? Uh-huh, yeah. What happened, it, it was a dormant organization, and uh, the Women's Political Caucus wrote to Governor Ford and said, we think this organization needs to be revitalized. So he, he put together a wonderful group of women, and I, he invited me to join, not that 
I think I'm so wonderful, but the fact of the matter is he knew I was a, you know, a busybody and would argue if he didn't do something. So at any rate, um, so we did a lot of things. It was just a, a wonderful time to be a woman in Kentucky because there was so much foment going on in terms of uh, some of the things that related to women.